Thank you. And nobody can pronounce, most people can't pronounce my full name as well as Johan can, so you can call me Ara. <laughs> yes. um, R is a free software. It's a member of the Google project. It's great. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of R users these days don't know about free software. Maybe they don't even know what open source software is. Um, and it's really important that we inform them so that they stand up for their rights and keep R free. Mostly this story is a pretty ordinary story. We have a nice community of hackers who are sharing the software, but there are always some hoarders who like to come in and try to make lots of money. And so I'm going to, I, I, I imagine you're pretty familiar with this sort of story, so I'm going to try to focus on the things that are particular to R. But, yeah, so first I will say what R is. I haven't really said that yet. How, um, how it started out pretty free and how gradually it's getting less free. Um, some things people will say about why this is okay and they're wrong, um, and what we can do about them. R uh, is a programming language, as I see it, um, some other things around it, but uh, it's used for statistical computing and graphics. It's quite popular in genomics and statistics originally, although it's used much more widely now. Um, Many other languages have adopted the structure that comes from S called the data frame. And so if you use that, that traces itself to S. Has anyone heard of R, S, or the data frame before? Raise your hand. I'm curious. Okay. That's actually one of the I Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. S started out in Bell Labs. It was distributed with, with source code back before we were like, thinking about porting the software, and before we really had needed the concept of free software. Uh, one of the people who used it decided to make a proprietary version called S+. Plus. Now that version that he started, that his company started, is owned by Tipco, and they're still publishing it in their proprietary license. There have been many proprietary versions of R. Um, fortunately, most of them, I mean, really all of them have kind of died out by now. Um, the only, the only one people really talk about is R. R is free software. It was started by Ross and Robert, and it's a, a successor of S. So, so many reasons to name it R. <laughs> it became a new project in 1997, and that's where we are today. Also, in 1997, we started, or uh, Kurt and Frederick started the comprehensive R archive network, which is what you might expect if you use Perl. Um, you Software doesn't have to be free, but there's strict pretty strict requirements and licenses. So the non-free software that you're, you're allowed to use is still, it's not like normal proprietary licenses, things like artistic license or creative commons, um, not share alike, so that sort of thing. There's also another popular pack, uh, repository bioconductor that is for the genomics data. I don't really, know anything about it, except my understanding is the thing that's common about these packages is they expect a similar data structure, so they work well, well with each other. And the core bioconductor packages are artistic licenses, which FSS, FSF says is not free, but in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty okay. Um, I'll also put my self into this history. I took a statistics course in 2006. I wanted to use statistics. I only am going to use free software um, as with, uh, yeah, proprietary software like this would be great. So I chose R, because the two options I found are R and PSPP, both can do projects, um, but R seemed easier. Also around that time, there were a bunch of extension packages released among other places like CRAN that were getting popular, called originally the Hadleyverse, because they were built by a guy named Hadley. Now, other people started developing them, so we said, that Change the name to Tidyverse. Um, this is another set of packages around, sort of like around a common data structure, although it's a bit broader than that. And now Hadley, we had the way we developed the first packages. He works at POSIT, that will become relevant later. Uh, already now. 2011, there was the release of a free ID for R called RCU, <coughs> and remains free today. Nowadays, if you go to like an R meeting 
most people are using RStudio. Maybe a lot of people don't even know we can use R some other way. And in the meantime, RStudio, the company, has changed name a few times. And I'll get back to that later. And yeah, this is this is where the, the problem starts to come about. A lot of people, for a lot of people, R is R Studio or POSIT, um, the company now. And POSIT is starting to release things that are totally proprietary, and also a lot of R developers aren't really paying attention to free software or even to open source. And they're technically generally free software, but there are a lot of little gray area problems that I'll we'll talk about. But, um, but I'm going to start with the good things. We like R and PSDD and other uh, free software because they give us the four freedoms of software. And the GNU project, of which these are both parts, uh, is an initiative, initiative to make a fully free operating system. We have succeeded. Here are the free operating systems from Free Software Foundation. Uh, you can start off, install, and install R, at least one of these. So I, I think a few of them support have R in the package manager. So you just install one of these and you have your free statistics environment. It's great. Um, so R itself is free under G, uh, GPL2 or later and works on any free operating systems, like it's in the package manager even. The Tinyverse packages are also free, generally under MIT license. R Studio is free. Um, sometimes you find that there's a package like that that's a client for some proprietary database, or uh, there's a package that uh, in practice will only run on a proprietary operating system because it, there's some compiler problems with the free operating systems. And that's not great, but the, the package itself is free so you can modify it to fix it. Also, uh, because some, I think it's just because so many people use RStudio, a lot of times people don't test things outside of RStudio, so a lot of times th things only work on RStudio. But RStudio is free, so not necessarily a problem. But uh, now I'll start to say some of the not so great things. RStudio is free software, except RStudio requires its contributors to sign a contributor license agreement. So, um, the agreement that gives POSIT the right to all the contributions. So, I can, um, I can download, anyone here can download AGPL version and redistribute HTML, but POSIT only is allowed to distribute proprietary ports of RStudio. Also, a lot of, with a lot of R ecosystem projects, contributions are only allowed by an unethical repository, software repository called GitHub. Um, in contrast, R itself still uses a good free software, SVN, and accepts patches by email. And there are many options other than GitHub. Here's a list from Free Software Foundation. We're actually adding more to this list. And GitHub scores the worst. There are so many others you can choose, or you can write your own, like uh, R does. Um, yes, and actually, we can see that part. Yeah, so I, it just so happened that I, had a, I have had a story, as it happened to me, that summarizes all these issues. Perhaps I'm biased and I'm only talking issues that happen to me. Um, I was using a package uh, that was developed, this was when it was still called RStudio, but it was developed by RStudio. I forget what the package was. And I was using it without RStudio IDE, and it didn't work. I figured out what the problem was. The problem was in one of the dependencies. The dependency was called use this, and the function was project activate. And this function would work in RStudio, but not outside RStudio. Uh, so I figured out sort of what the problem was, and I wrote a patch that made it work on my system. There were tests, but I couldn't get the tests running on my system. And I think, well, we'll get to that later, because um, I probably use a different system from the developers. So I patched the function anyway. I wrote a test that I couldn't run, but I thought maybe it's at least useful as for explaining the issue. Then I sent my contribution by email to the maintainers that were listed and they said that you have to make a GitHub pull request or an issue, and they recommended an issue. I think they recommended an issue because they didn't say, but I think it's because they didn't have a, a proper test, which makes sense. But of course, I wasn't going to submit it by GitHub, so um, I found a friend who was willing to um, be a slave to GitHub, 
and he posted my patch as a GitHub issue. And it got no response until I met in person with one of the useless developers. And I told him about the problem. And then he looked and he made a better patch because he was able to run the tests. And he actually explained in, in his uh, response that it's really, this demonstrates the importance of writing the tests. Reprex is the uh, library that uses the tests. Um, because the way I fixed it, it was a little wacky the way I fixed it, and I think the test I wrote didn't work in our studio, it only worked outside our studio. But of course, yeah, that's why we should make the tests work in free operating systems. And, uh, yeah. So, I summarize the package is free, our studio is free, the package only works in our studio, but we should be able to fix it, except the problem is I can't uh, maintain my freedom. If I, can't, if I want to report the issue or publish the patch, I can't maintain my freedom. And then if I want to write the test, I either need to use one of the more normal operating systems that I think most, most uh, I think, I don't really know, most, Probably most people working on our packages uh, for Posit are running Macs. So probably if I was running a Mac, it would be easier. Um, I could also fix the whole test framework. But uh, this whole um, uh, incident makes me think that people do want to do good, but they just find it more convenient to not care about their freedom. And they're not really you know, familiar with the idea that people might compare, care about their freedom. They're just like, isn't it, isn't it GitHub easy? And, you know, and yeah, and it works with Max, they don't think to test other things. Um, I should know, I haven't, I haven't, I don't use the Tidyverse patches that much. This happened like six years ago. In the meantime, a couple of times I've tried installing things, and my experience is it does get better over time. So, um, but still I think there's this attitude that people or this lack of concern about freedom. So to summarize, I started out by saying R itself is good, and there are a lot of good free software still in R. And in fact, R comes from S, which pretty much has a, was before free software, but it's free software. Um, and then there's some gray area issues that aren't really a problem yet. Now I will talk about the bad, issue, the bad things. I said, um, Posit has the right to make proprietary forks of our studio. Uh, in fact, yeah, and also said that today when people are talking about R, they're usually just talking about R or Posit and R Studio and don't even think about running R outside of R Studio. So because like because proprietary software doesn't exist to me, I don't really know what people are talking about these days. So I thought I should check out the Posit block to find out what's cool in R these days. So here's what the POSIT blog is supposed to look like, and you're supposed to um, uh, prove cookies. Um, but, um, but if I want to respect my freedom and run uh, without the proprietary JavaScript, it looks like this. Uh, or you can use Libre.js, it looks like this. So I don't see anything on the blog. Here, yeah, still nothing on the blog. And here are some of the blocks JavaScript, uh, shown in Libre.js. Does anyone use Libre.js? Oh, okay. You know, you know what Libre.js is? Libre.js it blocks the proprietary JavaScript. It allows not it allows trivial JavaScript and and, and JavaScript that's marked as free. Um, so yeah. Um, but then if I take the risky move of not using Libre.js, then I can look at what's popular in R these days. And I see the first this this uh, entry is their and their, I think it's annual conference. This one is about harnessing data with Snowflake and Posit, and Snowflake is a service as a software substitute database that runs on other people's computers in the cloud. Then, yeah, this is also Posit Conf. Then GitHub, GitHub, which is a service as a software substitute software repository that that scales that scores an F grade on the criteria. Um, it's about running GitHub Copilot, which is a plagiarism tool on the POSIT computers. So that's not free software. The POSIT package manager, I don't know enough about to say whether, whether that's free or proprietary. GT, I think, is free software. It's part of the papers. It's a package for making tables, I think. For making pretty tables with all complicated uh, formats. 
Quartos free, um, ROI, data science, project, whatever. Yeah, Databricks, that's another proprietary, um, I think it's a proprietary fork or something of uh, Spark running on, I think, Microsoft's computers. Someone can correct me if you know. So the point here is that you look at the, what's popular in R these days, it's a lot of proprietary software. Uh, on the blog, and then at the bottom of the page, they list uh, the big categories of their website. So they have one category for open source, which is, I, I guess it's okay, I'd rather than talk about freedom, because I care about my rights. But uh, yeah, that's good, except if they have open source as one category, does that mean these other things are not open source? They have enterprise, and cloud, I, I think that's proprietary. And then all these solutions, these are all services as software substitutes running on other people's computers. Uh, so, yeah, not good. So we have all the normal problems with free software, which uh, I think I could just skip. But uh, I'll say something specific to R. R has this academic tradition. So a lot of uh, statistics courses want to use R. And POSIT has, some, has a product, POSIT Cloud, that I think it's like, I, mean, I talked to someone who teaches statistics. I think POSIT Cloud is, it runs, it runs R on some computer, and you can interact with it by a web browser. And this can be really nice in the school, because then you can have your students, the first day, start writing R. You don't need to install R on their, on their computers, which can be quite difficult, because everyone has a new computer. Uh, but, but uh, I mean, this can be useful in many contexts. This can be useful in, in a business, whatever. But in, in a school, it's, it's, it's really bad, because if you tell your students you need to use this proprietary service as a software substitute for for learning how to do statistics, you're telling them, thank you, you're telling them that you are not allowed to learn how things work, even in this institution of learning. You are, you are, you are using this, this black box software that you don't have the right to. It's not even software, it's a service as a software substitute. Uh, now, I do suspect that Possible Cloud isn't doing so much, so it probably is pretty easy to move off of it, but is it going to get worse? Um, Another issue that's kind of uh, bigger in R is a lot of times people use R with pretty big data sets or things that require a lot of computation or um, things that require GPUs. So you might be running, you might want to have one big computer or several big computers in a data center that are running your, your main stuff and you just connect by a, term, by a laptop. So a lot of times people are running R on someone else's computer with some proprietary API. Um, We've actually talked about some of them today already. Uh, cloud, you know. um, when they could be running on their own computers, and I mean, so, so we have this extra problem of a lot of people have such such workloads that it uh, it makes sense at least to rent computers, and it would be nice if they could rent free computers instead of renting proprietary computers with proprietary interfaces. So those are some problems about our where R has been going. Now, a lot of people in R are completely unfamiliar with free software, and they've heard about open source, but they don't really know what it is. So they'll have a lot of, the, their logic won't match how we think about it. So here are some things that, that they may say and, and help you understand where they're coming from and how you should respond to it. A lot of people started using R after using something that was way, I mean, R is free software. A lot of people started using R after using something that was super proprietary and very expensive. Um, not so much S plus. Quite often, uh, it's people are used to SAS, which is a completely proprietary uh, statistics thing. Um, and so they say, well, yeah, R, R and POS or POSIT is a little bit proprietary, but they're way better than all the other ones. But this is a slippery slope. Yeah, so you, you choose the least bad, but that, that ensures that we'll, we'll wind up with something bad. We have to ask for more than, or demand more than that. Uh, and yeah, so people say that POSIT is a good company, and that they, <coughs> all reason they can say POSIT is a good company, but still, they're already doing bad things. They're already releasing proprietary software. We want better. Another thing people might say is that businesses need to make proprietary software because they need to make money. And, well, maybe some people here can prove these people wrong because they're making money doing free software. But it, it, if people do need to, um, if the only way to make money really is to make 
unethical software, I think we should change the rules about business and make it illegal to make unethical software or something. That's it's not okay. In order to, to live, you have to be unethical. One of the reasons why people say POSIT is a good company is POSIT is a B Corporation. A B Corporation is a certification that's run by a private nonprofit organization. And it means the company agreed to do something good. I don't really know what. But it's a private initiative. It's enforced by this private nonprofit organization. The organization can decide not to enforce it. The organization can go away. Very little legal protection. POSTA is also a public benefit corporation. This is a legal entity type in the United States, a corporation with bylaws that say that they have to consider public benefit in addition to shareholder value. But also, public benefit corporation doesn't protect our software freedom. You can see that because POSTA is already releasing proprietary software. Another example uh, showing that public benefit corporation, the B corporation, doesn't, doesn't really make a company good. Kickstarter is also a public benefit corporation, a B corporation. They fired their, work, their workers tried to organize a union. Kickstarter fired workers for organizing the union. They used other normal union busting tactics. They were bad enough a company that the union still wanted to organize and they succeeded. Yay. And also, Kickstarter makes their customers run proprietary software. So, public benefit corporation, B corporation, not enough. So, what we can do about this. Well, first of all, uh, a lot of this, um, a lot of this cool new trendy stuff in R is like people are running around in circles in the industry making garbage that we don't need and overly complicated versions of things that existed a long time ago. You don't need a lot of this new stuff. And yeah. And if someone makes you, someone tells you to use it, complain. If someone tells you to use GitHub, complain. Um, oh, right, yeah, that's what I just said. If you really, really decide you need to run proprietary software, at least protect yourself by with privilege separation, firewalls, uh, something like that. Uh, you can also make free equivalents of the proprietary software, and this is actually how R started in a way. I mean, R started by, by S, which was free software, but there were all these proprietary versions of S that died out in R's little state. TSPP, the one that I, the other one I considered, is a clone of SPSS, which is a proprietary statistics software, also. And yeah, complain again when people say you should use the proprietary software, but, but remember, um, R has always been, S started out pretty much free, R has been free, there have been all these proprietary implementations of S that have pretty much died. Uh, we'll keep running, running, running around in circles, but the, we, can, we can do it, but, but we need to keep, uh, keep caring about our freedom. 